Thanks for watching The Instant Reaction. For full episodes of the Canon Podcast, sign up as a YouTube member on this channel or go to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod. Welcome back to The Instant Reaction. I'm not on my normal setup today, apologies. But the more important thing is Arsenal just got back to winning ways away at Molyneux 2-0. Babs, that is one of those games where you just go, thank the Lord <laughs> that works out. Oh, my God. Listen, I- I'll be honest. 70th minute, 70th, oh, 80th minute, I was fuming. I was actually fuming. And-, and I say that because, look, obviously, the three points is what matters the most. But we've got two massive games coming up. It's Chelsea and Spurs this week, basically. And you can see that certain key players are absolutely knackered, not just physically, but mentally as well. The ideas are not flowing as much. They're not as sharp. And I'm sat there going, our bench is as strong as it gets. Apart from Yuri and Timber, everyone is fit. And you look at the forward options, Smith Rowe and, and Vieira and Cohen, I'm going, just make us up. Please, please, just make us up. Give, give me something different, not just to watch, but for give the players a little bit of a rest, even if it's 10 minutes. Because you can see that certain players are struggling. That being said, someone caught a second win, and that being Declan Rice. Don't know where he got it from. He digged it out of somewhere, and, and he pulled us through it. Because I'm telling you, in this 80, 80th minute, I was worried. I was worried because I'm like, this is one of those games where Wolves will make a chance eventually and they might score. Um, and, and we look really, really, I guess, lethargic going forward. So I'm going for the three points and uh, I don't really want to talk about the performance because it was really, really it was boring. You know, that's what I say. It was boring. But hey, job, job done. Can't complain too much. Yeah, it was it was not a classic, was it? It was not a classic at all. Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased. Look, obviously, it's important to get back to any ways. I think the, the, the physical fitness aspect of it is obviously it is a concern but when we're winning <laughs> it feels like it the momentum no just naturally carries you in, in the sense that once you've scored you know i think once we scored the goal there was a sort of you know obviously it was in the end of the half but there was a period where um we felt like we were on top sort of coming out in the second half and it felt like we sort of had that that moment where we went right we're back we, we remembered we're good all it takes is one person's uh you know the far margins of football all it takes is one person's yeah to go in and your whole mentality the whole outlook the whole season changes and that's kind of the beauty and the, and the tragedy of the game but yeah i think the, the physical aspects of things was only a problem for me in that first half i was sort of going we look sluggish we look tired we look sort of all over the place but once the goal went in i went look that is all still true but the momentum of us of us having that goal i felt was a was a was a big impact on the second half and just and i think it brought back that belief in the team you guys know I hate doing Roy Keane analysis and making it all about, you know, they don't want to do more, the mentality, the leaders. I hate doing that, but I do feel the goal going in switched something in the team. I think in the first half there was there was a sort of a lack of intensity. We were slightly, what I'd say is that like we were slightly like behind the game. Like the game was sort of happening or the ball was there and everyone was sort of slightly late for their actions. Everyone's slightly late to the press. Everyone was slightly late for their for a pass or that the, the first touch was off or whatever. Once the goal goes in, you just go, okay, cool. And we weren't at our best, by the way, in the second half. I'm not saying that at all. But you felt as though we we sort of arrived into the game. And yeah, it was it was it was not a classic at all. Um yeah, th- so maybe this is not not a necessarily game to talk about the performance. We will at some point, but without sounding like again, Roy Key analysis, how big is that for the title race? And it's huge. Oh, it's, it's massive. It's massive. And it sets us up nicely as well because we've got, I think, the two, two of the most defining games. And and people are looking past Chelsea, which I don't like. I know they lost today, but they're a team that turned up in big games. And we saw it at the Stamford Bridge that they can cause you issues. So even today, I didn't watch the game, but, you know, I, I saw the, the scoreline and I saw, you know, apparently Chelsea put a performance. So that's where my focus lies. And that's why I'm sat there going, like the game against Chelsea, the first half is going to be so, so important. Because right now we're at the stage of the season where the players in the second half do look a bit tired. They don't have that same second win unless they pull out of somewhere. And the, and the subs aren't really coming off and making a massive impact anyway. So it's all about scoring an early goal. This team needs a goal. It needs a goal, as you said today. That's the, as the best example. When they score a goal, there's a sense of relax. Okay. We can we can play we can play a pass I can do I can take a bit more time there's not as much pressure and that's why I think when we were going on that run of when we were winning like what five six nil per game we were scoring goals because we scored early and then the players just relax and once you set off to that first goal the players just seem to, to play a lot better so I think that the first half against Chelsea is going to be very important because Chelsea are a team that in the big games will cause issues but if you can score an early goal I think there will be a game that's uh, very much winnable. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge, um, and I, I agree. Not don't want to look too fast. 
uh, far past that. Apologies for the echo. There's nothing I can do, unfortunately. I'm not in uh, not in my normal setup. Um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, oh, maybe I'll talk a bit quieter than we listen to an echo. Um, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> I think um, yeah, the Chelsea game is, is obviously going to be huge. Um, but maybe we should we should finish up on on this one first. Um, we've had a, a, a super chat from Mafia. Thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate that. I was raging as well. I don't understand why he doesn't want to use his squad. It's so annoying. Not using the subs at the end. Thoughts on that? It, it was uh, that was the most annoying thing. I don't think I've been that annoyed at Mikel for a while. Like I was fuming. I, I was sat there going, make a sub, make a sub, make a sub. Um, and he brought on party and I'm not ready to be fair to him, but I'm just thinking, look, there's players there that are fit. They are fit and they're ready to go. And I get it, the players that you trust the most in Erdegaard and Saka, they, they're going to play, but they look knackered. And if they don't like it, I don't care. They can stay in for 90 minutes. They can stay in for 120 minutes, but they look knackered and they look tired. They need a rest. And so when I'm sitting there going, look, you've invested in Spiffro by giving him 100k a week. You've invested in Fabio Vieira by spending 35 million pounds. If you don't trust them, then who will? You know, you have to trust them. You have to show us. And in a game, especially when you're winning 1-0, it's not like... And the worst part is for me, and this is what's it's weird, is if we're losing, he does bring them on. Like in a game that we're ch- he does bring them on. He does try them. So in a state that we need it more, he brings them on. But in a, when, when it's like 1-0 and the game's, you know, in our favour, he seems to just wait, wait and wait. And I'm telling you, if we had conceded a goal, you would have seen Vieira come on straight away. Smith Rock come on straight away. So it's just confusing. You know, I, I wanted to get a bit more clarity because these are players that, look, if they're not going to play, sell. And I'm saying that because in, in financially, in the sake of it, keeping on the bench, letting the contract run out, they're going to lose value and, you know, you're not going to be able to recoup any money. Uh, so it's very important for us this summer to clarify what is the plan for Fabio Vieira? Is he going to be a part of the first team? Likewise, Mills Smith throw. And if they're not, be ruthless and let them go forwards for themselves, but also in terms of financially so we can invest in players he actually trust. Because Trossard, he trusts and he'll bring him off the bench. Kivio, he'll trust he'll bring him off the bench. But it's something about Smith Rowe, Vieira, and Ketia and Nelson, they're in a different category and we need to know why. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's, it's a really bizarre scenario. I think you're you're bang on in terms of, you know, he'll never bring them on in a winning game. He'll never bring them on. And, and it, I mean, you know, there's an understandable logic to that in sense, you know, you don't want to change your winning formula. If you, you know, if you're ahead, you want to you know, keep doing what you're doing. I, I do get that. But there's a, yeah, there, there's, there's got to be questions asked. I think it's one of those things where it, it, it's not a black and white conversation and, and the use of the squad is is a is a concern but i think the two the two sides of it are well we've layered on top and then obviously naturally the players on the bottom will sort of fall off that's fine but when you're competing against man city when you're competing against liverpool when you are competing against these sides and you're trying to play Bayern, you know it's not necessarily to use them in those games but in games like today if you really don't trust an emil smith throw a fabio vieira to come on and not give away a ball or not do something like that that is a concern. And the fact that you've given them contracts to not even be able to do that, or games like, for example, against Luton at home, where Fabio Vieira's on the bench and Erdogan plays the full 90 minutes, or Saka's playing to, I think it's 70 minutes against Burnley and 65 minutes against Newcastle and we're 3-4-0 up. If you, I'm not saying you play them in the, Burnley, in, the, in the buying games and the City games, but that's fine. You've got to pick your best team. But in those games, if you don't trust them then, that is a concern. And ultimately, you've given them the contracts. You've had them in the squad. If you didn't want these guys... That's fine. You had a January window, yeah. so uh, yeah. yeah, it's. I don't know. It's it's not black and white. It, it's it's complicated. Of course, there's, of course. There's, with any kind of squad management conversation, obviously there's injuries, there's recovery, there's probably loads of things we don't even know as well. Like you know about yeah. these players that you know issues that they've got dealing with and stuff. We're only dealing with scraps of information, right? Yeah. What we see on the surface, but. I do think it's been an issue so far this season. And it's not, you know, this evening, we're not going to go away from it going, bloody hell, Mikel, why don't you use your squad? Because we won. But it is a concern, sort of more, more of a meta concern for the season. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the concern that's most prominent in my mind, at least. And, and I'm not going to... I really think the second goal is going to paper a little bit over some cracks. I'm not saying that we didn't deserve to win the game. We were the better team marginally. But I feel like the feeling now is a bit like, oh, we, we scored two goals, happy. If it was 1-0, I'm telling you, all these conversations would be a bit more prominent. And it, for me, I look at it compared to Man City and go, how many players does Pep not trust? Like, there are players, and I'm thinking, what, maybe Nunes, a new signing. You know, who else do they have? Oscar Bob or someone like that, Sergio Gomez. Whereas I think Mikel Arteta has four, five, six players that he has signed or he has given contracts to, Nelson, Nketiah, Smith-Rowe, Vieira and co, that he doesn't trust. 
and and it's a reality. He doesn't trust them unless he has to trust them, and, and that's where it's it's just a bit confusing. That's all it is. You know, I don't mind Mikel going. I don't think these players are good enough off the ball. I don't trust them off the ball. That's fair, but then don't give him contracts or move them on. You know, invest invest there and reinvest in players that you actually do trust. Because I'd rather have players going. Okay, we can bring him off the bench. We can bring him off the bench. And I, right now, I'm like, I don't know. If Smithrow comes. How, when's how many games has Smithrow just sat on the bench? Not even come on. Or Vieira not common, and these players are fit now. They've been fit for weeks, a month. Or so, so I just want clarity. That's all it is. Yeah, someone put a, a comment in. Uh, where was it? If, if he brings them on, and we lose, I'll test be roasted. Yeah, fine, but that's football. We're, we're not. We're not talking about. Firstly, that's football. Secondly, if you don't trust them to come on and lose you a game, to, to, and to not lose you a game, that's a concern. And thirdly, I'm, I'm not even talking. I'm not even talking about the games where it's close. I'm talking about the games where we're three, four, five nil ahead. And he's still not making those changes and, those, and, and change. You know, the only one I can remember is when he brought Vieira on against Sheffield United. That should have happened yeah. most of you know, exactly. that run. You know, and you look at yeah. there was a moment this evening where Ben White rolled down his um, his sock to reveal his injury, and it's quite a while when in the game. Just... And I... Say again. When was that? It was towards the beginning of the game, and he wasn't he wasn't quite at the races. And I just thought, I don't know, and maybe I'm, I'm probably almost definitely overanalyzing, but I did wonder whether he was sort of doing a slight look. <laughs> I'm playing on one leg here, and it's just players yeah. like that. I just I don't know. I just I look at Vieira, I look at Saka, Saka not attacking the space in behind the, re- the receptions and stuff. I, I will say I don't want to go too far into this because we won the game, so in the end, you know, yeah. whatever. But there work for me. If we, if we had lost that game, I would be sat here saying we, we had the exact same problems against Bayern and Villa. It's almost yeah. like three in a row. The outcome is different today. Yeah. We weren't penetrating centrally. Gabriel and Saliba were so conservative in their passing. They might knock it into the midfield, but if they knock it into the midfield, it immediately goes wide. You never see the midfielders either turning and going or he knocks it into the midfield uh, um, or the midfielders aren't there and you play it straight through, straight, straight past. Wolves, they have players like Doherty who just picks it up and runs with it. He just yeah. goes through. There's, there's a, there's a, not Doherty. Sorry, um, the the guy on line from Man City. No, oh, uh, 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 Tom, Tommy, someone, some Donnelly, maybe Doyle. Doyle, Doyle, that's his name. The guy on line from you know he 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 played through. So, and, and yeah, and then there was the moments where that's something we need. You know, we, we need that desperate. Habits, yeah, Habits was being a bit negative, or Jesus would, you know, even the, the moment there's a couple of moments we could have a shot. So we're having the same issues and talking about the same issues, but the outcome's different. So. I, you know, I appreciate yeah, I think, the, the end of the match. I think Mikel recognises that for sure because I think there's a reason why you, you saw so much Trossard drifting centrally today and, and Jesus dropping off deep. He wants those players because those are the two players I'm looking at going, you can turn. And they tried it at times, to be fair. Jesus is one of those players but he can make a bit of space. And we saw it in the Champions League against Bayern in the first leg as well. But it's a profile that we need. And, you know, on paper, you go Smith Rowe, someone that should be able to do that or at least could do that in the past. And, and we're not seeing him enough. So, you know, I think that's the, the thing we're looking at is either we use Smith Rowe now in the most important part of the season or we go in the summer okay look my friend let, let's move you on and we go and sign a player that I do trust you have yeah. to you have to because the squad it, you know the bench is strong right now it's not yeah. it's not in the past but you've got maybe one two players maybe in Ketty and Nelson you've got a very strong bench and and I just want to see a, a little bit I don't want to say using it better could be won the game right but if we hadn't won the game or we drawn the game or it was just 1-0 you know I think a lot of fans would have noticed it as well and I think it just for me it's a bigger concern going into the future two big games coming up and I and they will be testing physically as well. Chelsea are a good side, and likewise the Spurs. And I want to see how we manage those games. Yeah, and I want to come to this comment because, I, like, it's fair. Like, absolutely, you could say why are we complaining about this stuff when we won the game. But that's results based analysis, and I, 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 I can't. I don't think that's worth doing for me. We're going well. We won the game, so what does it matter? The yeah. reason, the reason we we lost the last two games is the same reason that we were on the edge in this game. So those are the things for me. For me, it's always about ignore the results. What are the things we're not doing correctly? And 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 that's what comes to it. Obviously, there will be people who go, I don't care, we won the game. And that's fine. And Tim Campbell, you're obviously entitled to your opinion. But for me, the the result doesn't hide those things that we've been talking about. But we should move off them. Um, unless we do this. Biz Wajit, thank you so much for your contribution. Our test of reluctance to bench makes me think he may not keep the likes of one year ago in the future. That's another aspect as well. Thank you for your contribution. Um, you know, the the if you have those players on the bench and they're not playing, fine, but who are you blocking? What, what pathways are you blocking for yeah. one year or Royal Walters or whoever it might be? Um, let's those move those on I that. can understand, by the way. Just, just yeah. on quickly, on, on the young players, if 16, if they were 20, I'd understand. That's the one yeah. thing I will say on my kill side. 
Um, let's move forward to maybe some individual performances before we come on to more sort of meta conversations and then the, the comments. Um, uh, let's start at the back. Uh, David Ryan, I thought, had probably arguably his best, one of his best games in Arsenal show. I thought he was Solid. terrific. He did exactly what I want from a goalkeeper, which is kill the opposition atmosphere. Every time he comes and claims the ball and he, and he looks assured and he's in position as well, always give it an option. You know, when when you, the pass goes back, he's always on the right angle to receive the ball and, and play along as well. So I think it was a, a fantastic performance and what, six away clean sheets in a row. I mean, yeah, that, that's the highest in Arsenal history. I think he's broken an Arsenal record and, and I think one of the Premier Leagues as well. So yeah, fantastic performance. I, I'd actually say he probably was up there as man in the match. I know Rice is pretty well towards the end, but I think Raya for me was our standout. Yeah, it's just quickly on that before we come back to the individuals there's loads of sort of stats going i think it's six six clean sheets in a row uh away from home which is we've never done that before in the league which is crazy yeah uh martin nice. O'Gard now has the premier league goal involvements for arsenal with 31 goals and 19 assists but we need to replace him um get arsenal him out of the club get out of yeah. he's doing awful uh Arsenal, yeah Arsenal kept six consecutive clean sheets away from home yeah. for the first time in their history which is is crazy um yeah so some really really good numbers coming out and you know, it always happens we're always Teetering the people like it, yeah, genius and, and madness, and you know, that's, yeah, that's, that, 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 that's why I think most football fans see football as results based analysis. You know, the goal to, I'm telling you for a fact that second goal today changed a lot of people's opinions. If it was just one nil and we were just hanging on towards the end, there would have been a lot more. Um, but I do want to say it, it just shows how Mikel has raised the standard of the club in terms of look how we're talking right now. We've just won a game two nil, we're top of the league, and we're still sitting, you know, trying to find uh, something to make something to fix a problem to fix. We all become perfectionist. You know, we're Champions League quarterfinals for the first time in what nearly ten plus years, and we're, we're complaining about it. So yeah, I think the fans definitely raise their standard. It's not a really a bad thing either. You know, if we want to be associated as a big club, we have to have that. And if you look at who you're competing with, you know that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, unfortunately, Scott Willis is not going to be posting the filter while we're on. He said he's he's going to be posting it later, which is very sad. So we're going to have to maybe he's doing it on purpose. Maybe. He's going subscribe to Patreon. <laughs> Yeah, he, you got, guys, you've got, to, you've got to look at the Patreon on YouTube members to talk about, to talk about Filter. Um, <laughs> filter, if we've lost, sack Arteta. Agree. Um, ben White, I thought, was solid. I, I, I do just want to see him... Sorry, one thing quickly on Raya. Something he does so well is... Today, it, sometimes it's as the two. Today, it was as, almost as a three. When you have someone you trust so much on the ball, sort of centrally between your centre-backs... It means your midfielders can step up and occupy players further up the pitch and it drops walls back. They couldn't step onto us because Raya is so comfortable. Rice is further up and if they step onto us, we, we knock it into Rice. So he's so useful in that in that aspect. And yeah, those conversations that we were having at the beginning of the season seem rather silly now. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's the game, isn't it? Um, it's part of the game, isn't it? Um, the... That's a very good accent. <laughs> Thank you, Babs. I don't know if people um, call it that is, but it's very good. But uh, I was going to say Babs, Ben White. Um, I thought uh, I'd just love to see him with a couple of games off, fully sharp. I, I can't yeah. wait to see Ben White at the beginning of next season. I think he's going to have a storming beginning of the next season because he's going to be off for the, seat, for the for the Euros. He's going to be in Dubai. He's going to have a bit of rest on that right knee, what was going on. Hopefully, time as well. A bit of real time, time, maybe, actually. Mate, there was a moment in the, in the, in the tunnel where he was, everyone was going, come on. Come on, Ben White's just walking past like <laughs> he just doesn't care. Yeah, no, he doesn't. And he's such a professional. He's so good at what he does. Is yeah, is mad. I think I've been, Ben White's so good. Um, we didn't particularly make use of the wide. I, I did think with Walls having a three, we could have used those areas a bit more. But equally, I thought the wing back got got back okay. So maybe there was a kind of overlap thing. Saka was in a different position uh, when they were building up. Who's sort of further back? Um, so yeah, maybe it wasn't the day for the overlap, but he did well. Didn't, didn't have many particular thoughts. Yeah, I think he was, I think he was perfectly fine. Um, and yeah, we could talk about tiredness and stuff, but I think the player that would have played in his position, two players, both are unfit right now. You know, Tommy Asus out injured again, and, and you're in Timber, so can't really do much there. Yep. Salibri so Gabriel. Um, I, as I said earlier, I'd like to see. A little bit more proactivity. I, th I still think there's, there's. It might be the players ahead of them, etc., etc. I get that, but I, I would love to see a little bit more from them in, in possession. That said, yeah. defense, you know. You yeah, they were, they were perfectly fine. I think what, what we want is questions. 
give the, give the opposition something to think about. And I think when Saliba and Gabriel get the ball, it's very much predictive where they're going to go. And I also do argue, as, as you said, it's about the players receiving the ball. Who's actually going to turn? You know, the only player I can think of is Jesus, maybe, or Trossard. You know, Havertz and Odegaard aren't that quite quite the same profile. So maybe it's something we look to invest in the summer. If we had like a name, a Musiala, you know, and he's receiving the ball, the opposition's thinking twice whether to press or not to press. Huh? For example. For example, you know, just I'm saying, transfer list is potentially a buy. Uh, listen, maybe we we'll make it happen. Uh, Kivior struggled for a big chance. I, I, I feel sometimes when we're playing on the edge of games and we're in these situations and we're so fraught emotionally, one mistake and then people go, "He's done. He's he's the worst left back we've ever had." It's like, yeah, yeah. let's just calm down. He made a mistake. He should have made more contact. That was poor. But we know Kivior's strength defensively. We know what his strengths are, and they are defensively. That's not a normal Kivior performance. So I'm not what, too worried about it. If that continued, obviously, he'd be concerned. But it feels like a one-off for me. And actually, in the final third, I saw him overlapping more than I've ever seen him do. He didn't have an amazing yeah. game. But I I, 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 I do... Do you know what? I always thought I always references the Pablo Mari game. People, re- You reference Pablo Mari, everyone goes, Chelsea, Romelu Lukaku absolutely destroyed him. Lukaku got the better of him twice that day. But it was twice... Like, calm down. Yeah, he was pretty it's good. Like, like, I remember that, actually. It was, it was not pretty good. He was all right. Well, I'm not saying that either. It's just, it's just like we had this sort of... It got it's absolutely nice. done. Like, calm down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only example I can ever think of is... is who, was, who was the player against for Swansea against Chambers all those years ago? Was it... Oh. Uh, um, for, uh, no, um, yeah, because of the M. Jefferson... Jefferson M- Montero? Uh, no. Montero. Yeah, that, that, that was... Montero was right. Uh, that was, I'm pretty sure Montero was a player. But yeah, you're right. I think a lot of individual moments. Kivio, no context. Actually, you know, pause. He's a grower. Kivio is a grower. Um, and he grows into games. Um, you know, listen, uh, take out you what. He grows into games very well at times. And, and I think he's a player who, as it gets tougher and harder, you know, I think most centre-backs are like that. Where it, when it's re- re- a bit gritty, he, they grow into the games. So so I think, you know, it was a few shaky moments at the start. But, you know, who else are we going to play there right now? Zinchenko. <laughs> Um, Rice, yeah, what an engine this guy's got. Um, I thought he was shooting from outside the box was pretty poor. The, the couple of opportunities he had, but it was fine. Um, Erdegaard, I don't know, loads. Yeah, pretty normal, normal Erdegaard performance. Go on. I don't think it was normal. I think it was a little bit below par his normal standard, which is pretty very, normally very high. Um, but I think it's, it, I can see it. I can see why. Uh, because he's played so many games and he runs the most and he chases the ball down every single time and at one point it's going to affect his play. Um, and that's why I think I want to see maybe someone off the bench that can take his role. Because look, we've seen him being taken off. He got taken off against Villa. So the, Mikel will take him off. Yeah, and that was after we were losing, by the way. So uh, maybe it's the off-the-ball work. And I think, you know, someone mentioned earlier that maybe Smith and Vieira are, are below par. And that, that's fair enough, for sure. But, you know, they have to they have to get to the, the standard because, you know, why are you in the Arsenal bench then? Because if, if you want to play for Arsenal, you have to have that off-the-ball ability. But uh, I think Odegaard's performance is a little bit below par, but look, he scored a goal. So we're going to be shameless and say, look, he's fantastic. He's the best in the world. He's got a goal, so he can't have had a good bad performance, perhaps. That's yeah, how it works. impossible. You impossible. This. You got That's how football works. This is how, this we is were sensational today. Federation of football. Well, look at his GA. Arsenal so. are back. You're gonna see all the United fans. Do you know? The, have you seen that trend on YouTube now, where rival fans make a bit like Arsenal are scary? Be scared of Arsenal. Oh, You're gonna see it so. today. You're gonna see like people. I'm telling you, we know the suspects as well. I'm looking at you, man. Today, midweek it was Arsenal bottlers. Now it's Arsenal are scary again. Yeah, we're gonna see a Mark Goldbridge. That. He's, he's doing these thumbnails at the minute where he's like <laughs> mid sort of mid movement. He's like, I wonder how he gets that thumbnail. But like, how does he got? How how have you, how have you? Is he just trying to find a pause or something? I don't know. I don't know. But it'll be yeah, it'll be also my back, whatever it is. <laughs> Look, when, back, yeah. when you speak, this is the thing though. When you speak, maybe we could go down this road. When you speak to other content creators and people in this space, Liverpool and Arsenal are the most interesting. To talk about right now they're getting the most views on online that they're, they're, they are the, the yeah. two clubs that have the most sort of um sort of to, to discuss around and that i do think there is something in that and you can feel sky like before the game like begging us to, to have a slip up begging us to like to do something it's a, it's all that all oh, can they get back on? And, and i understand you know there's, there's anything about that but they would love it. They would love it if we drop points. Of course they would. They would love it. If City drop points, no one really cares. But if Arsenal drop points, everyone can jump in. Everyone. Talk to everyone. They, they all go in. Yeah. But we're massive. Yeah. We're massive. It, it, it's because also they know that us as fans, we will react. Yeah. Who, I'll ask yourself the question, how many City fans do you know? 
how many City fans do you generally? I'm one, maybe. One, I know one. And and, and Man City are the team right now that are the treble winners. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the treble winners. They're you know one of the biggest clubs in the world. They're fa- fantastic and one City fan. How many Man United fans do you know? How many Liverpool fans do you know? How many Chelsea fans do you know? A lot more, I, I like to think. So uh, it's because they know that we'll react as fans. You know, whether it's our players getting attacked or our manager, we're going to react. So you know, they have to do stuff. If people talk about Man City, there's not really much to talk about. People go, oh, they're right, they're a bit good. You know, at last year we bottled the title. City won the treble. I would argue that us bottling the title was the bigger narrative than City winning a treble. It's a bigger story, hundred percent. Yeah, it was. Work out, you know, who read more things about what story. Hundred percent, it will be Arsenal. Um, let's move forward. Uh, Kai Havert. Havertz had a good game, and I'm not yeah, saying he was, good. he was poor, but uh, and maybe this is going to be a little bit harsh. If this is a habit beyond this game, but it's starting to annoy me. Whenever he, not whenever, sometimes when he receives the ball in the final third. His instinct, before he's even received the ball, his body is moving back. He's going back to, to, to play a pass or whatever. Now, there is a level of game intelligence where you've got to reset. You've got to wait to, to get bodies in the box. If you're on the last line and you receive and play, yeah, you're running into four, four men. I get that. I'm not saying it's you've got to always step forward. But I genuinely don't think I can remember more than, say, five, six incidences across the season where Havertz has received the ball and turned and gone. And, he's, and he, what he's, re, he's prepared his body to go rather than to step back. And it really frustrates me. It really fr- this, this is not really his performance. He did it a couple of times this evening, which is why I'm talking about it. It's yeah. more of a meta conversation about his season. It, it's starting to irk me. And it's like this constant desire to reset that I just, I find really hard. I, I find hard to watch. It's very much a, a striker's instinct. A link man type of player, like, you, know, you want to link the play straight away, and and this is where it's a bit. I think you have a fine performance today, by the way. So I think it's pretty good at times. Um, but also at the same time, it's like where is he going to play next season? Because if we do end up getting a striker, does he still play in that same position? Is he going to be our number ten, and not going to be the number eight? And then if you're going to be the number ten, we want to see you drive with the ball because that, that's almost our De Bruyne. He, you know, you do KDB in that space, he would drive through that thing. And Havertz has got the ability. I think that's the annoying thing. That's, that's maybe your frustration as well because he has pace. We've seen it. And he can drive when he goes and he can knock it past players. We, remember that moment against Konate where he knocked it past him and, and got him sent off. And he can shoot. What, look at that goal against Sheffield United. He can shoot across his body and he's he's got that RBP finish. It's yeah. just, I just it, it's in his mind. It's But it's not even a decision that he's making in the it's moment. A habit. It's a habit that when the ball is coming in, he's already, he's not even thinking, oh, I could knock it going behind. He's just yeah. going, I, I know I'm not going there. And yeah, it, uh, that, yeah, that that yeah. What what happens? I, I, is you, mm-hmm. you say sorry. You say something like that, and then people go. Oh, so you're saying no, no, no. I'm just if we, ha- if we can notch it one step to the left, that's yeah, all I want. Yeah. It is holding us back in an aspect. Yeah, I think I think the most promising thing is look, at the start of the season when we signed him. The, the the thing that people questioned the most was not his dribbling or his shooting and his goal scoring. It was actually off the ball work. And that's been answered exactly. He can work off the ball very well. So I think if if it's a we're looking for an extra five percent at this point. We're seeing a lot of what, what I want from Havertz. If you can give us the extra five percent, which if you have having seen the way he's grown all season, how much he's learned, he's a very smart player. I think he can do it because he's got the physical ability and he's got that pace. And once he starts doing it more often and gaining confidence, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure his, his stats in the Bundesliga was he was completing nearly two dribbles a game. So when he's got confidence and, he, and he's trusting his body and stuff, I think he can do it. It's just a matter of in the Premier League, you know, there's a limited amount of space and you have to you have to trust yourself a certain level. And then it's, I think he's still growing. Yeah. Let's come to the front three before we uh, take some questions. Um, or maybe we could do some the subs as well. Um, Trossard, Jesus and Saka. Uh, obviously, Trossard had the moment. I mean, what a signing. What a signing this guy is. And he is one of our only players. The thing, uh, we've been talking about the moment players. Trossard yeah, is a moment player. player. The problem is... Bayern Munich, look at that. Yeah, he's a moments player, but the problem is, is do do look me in the eye and tell me you want Trossard starting fifty games next season? You, you don't. You yeah. just don't. And that's not a that's not a slight on him. He no, is, but what he does in terms of the squad role he has, he might be the most effective player in the Premier League. Coming yeah. in, starting let's say ten Finish. games a season, coming off the bench and scoring. I mean, literally look at the numbers; he's got the best in, record in Europe and creating moments. He is unbelievable but do you want him starting every single game next season you don't so he can't be our moments player 
he's got to be the supplement. He's got to be the supplement to someone else. And if he's that, what a play. Yeah. I mean, look, nine, that's nine league goals, and I'm pretty sure they're all non penalty. So, and they're not all from starts either. That is very impressive numbers. And I think you're right. He's not going to be a starter, but you have to have him in the squad. This, this idea that we should move him on, I think is naive. I think you need to have a player like that in your squad because you know off the bench, okay, something might happen. He might make an impact. You know, he scored some very important goals this year. The goal against Liverpool, the goal against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, the equaliser, you know, very the goal at the Community Shield as well. So you're right. He's a very important oh, squad player. That's an important goal. And, yeah. that's an important he goal, he is a part of it. We talk about that, that maybe the, the 15 or 16 players. He's definitely a part of that. And he's he's like 12, 12, max 13. So he's, he's a part of that team. And I, I, I think the games he starts, he's, he's a good profile for games like this where it's tight space because he's very technical and he's very direct. And if he had a bit more pace, we could have, been, we could have had a very scary player there. Yeah. I think without Jesus, with Havertz, at the, it, well, it, basically playing how we played against Aston Villa, Trossard and Havertz, we forget about it because of how the, how the game went. But we would have been talking about Trossard and Havertz down that left-hand side and how they connected. Yeah, they very good. And is that a question mark of our, you know, you, you guys shouted about the left-hand side on the pod. Um, you can go check out. Um, <laughs> yeah, did you see about the, the timber shout? I hate it. I can't believe you let George say that. No, but I, I was shocked. I was like, hmm. So if you missed this, I was off the pod on Thursday, whatever, because I had some family event. And, and that's why I'm in this room. Um, and uh, George said, timber a left eight? I leave the podcast for one day, Babs. One day. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, he um, said it with such confidence. I'm like, he must have put thought through this. He must have had like a. I, 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 in my head, I'm going, he's not just said that, has he? George will always have thought about it. Will he be right? That's <laughs> another question. Um, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll discuss that as a point. But yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I looked at that left hand side as a sort of a fix to the left hand side. And Trossard and Havertz was written. It wasn't quite the same today. Havertz was a bit deep. He wasn't quite playing on the last line as he did against Villa in the first half. But had we won that game, we would have been yeah, talking about yeah. that connection on the left hand side. Yeah, they both could have scored. Yeah, I, I like that. Pulls up the top and the, co the combination play. So, yeah. They're a, um, yeah. They're a better Jesus. combo than Martinelli and, and, and Havertz. They work better. You know, there's a better synergy there, for sure. But are they a better combo than me and you, Buffs? Listen, that's hard. That's hard to beat. It's hard to beat. Sorry, George. Um, uh, yeah, look, look, I think Jesus was, um, was fine. He was fine, you know. This, it was a typical Jesus performance. No goal, but industrious off the ball, some some very nice skill and, and a very nice play in, in tight spaces. And he's a player that you want in a game like this where you're firing the ball towards him and you can do a bit of skill and flick it over someone. And I think if he has a little bit more confidence, we'd have seen that more often. You know, the Jesus of, at the start of last season is a player I really miss because, you know, that's my type of footballer where he's got the the raw ability, but he shows it and he's entertaining to, to, to watch as well. Um, but I think he was perfectly fine. It was a solid 7 out of 10 performance. He's the most level player in terms of performance. You know exactly what you're getting for him. Like, yeah, yeah, you rarely get a stink up. Every week, it's the same thing. He's going to be pressy. He's going to be sharp. He's probably going to spurn a chance. He's probably not going to score, but he'll be an important part of our attacking play. Yeah, so I, that, I reckon his stocks will go up. We sign another striker or a forward and he becomes a bit more secondary, he'll, his stocks will go up like Trossard's. Because I don't think he's a, he can be a starter for sure. But I think if you get a, a, a better player or more clinical striker and he's more of a, he can play anywhere, right wing, left wing, down the middle, completes the entire attack. And, and that's, that's the ultimate level of depth. Uh, people are saying Raya at left eight. Uh, Raya at 10. Eight. Raya at six. <laughs> Talibra's a false nine. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, he said it with confidence. He, George has really he's got a master plan right now. He believes it's going to happen. I put it in the group chat. He didn't reply. I just I put Timber at left eight. Get me back on this podcast. Um, let's finish up with uh, Saka. Um, he just needs a rest. <laughs> okay, who is who is Pep Saka? And when I say who's Pep Saka, who's Pep's player that he does not drop and does not rest? Does Pep have a player like that? Roger. Because I wonder if Mikel is trying to make that the case at Arsenal, which he definitely has in a sense. There's some players like White, Odegaard, Saka, that he will never rest. They, they will always play, they will always be there. Who does Pep have that? Is it, is it Rodri? Rodri uh, and KDB? Yeah, yeah, it's like if they're fit. They? But I, sometimes he's dropped KDB, though. He has yeah, done that's it. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Rodri, Rodri's the only player that comes to mind. Rodri Diaz. and Edison, maybe, because he's a goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah maybe Diaz. D no, Diaz is he was on the bench today. He's, so, dropped, he, yes, he's dropped Diaz. Yeah, so I, I, Harlan, obviously, these players, when they're fit, they start, but because they get injured, they get arrested anyways. These players, our players are always fit, thankfully. Odegaard and Ben White and Saka. 
the only player I think Pep has is Rodri. And we've got our always fit defensive midfielder in, in Declan Rice as well. But in Bukayo Saka's case, you know, yeah. I, I just look at Reese Nelson and go, look, you, we gave him £100,000 a week. That is that is a lot of money. And his you, you would have thought, okay, you give him that show of faith, you're going, okay, he will play a part this year. How often have we seen him come off the bench? Is is there anyone? Please put in the chat because we should come to questions now to finish out the show. So please, uh, any any questions and topic suggestions, please um, get them in the chat, and we'll we'll come to them before the show ends. Is there anyone in the chat who thinks that like Sack, like we've we've managed Saka's minutes well this season? I'm I'm genuinely, and I'm not saying that as a kind of challenge. It's not a rhetorical question. It's a genuine question. I would love to know, like. I, I don't understand it. Put, giving because also you know the Smith Rowe contract was like three years ago. Like you know the, the team is in a very different place. We just got on a title charge last season, and Reese got a new contract. What's happened? What's happened? I I really don't get that. I really don't get it. even at the end of last year, it was very important games we were chasing, and he was coming on and having an impact. So there was trust there. So I, I, I don't know if it's that you're not just as a right winger, more of a left winger, but it's confusing. That, that's the part. And and again, you know, we have to then cash in. You can't keep him on the bench because that's a hundred thousand pounds we going out of the wage. And there's a player you could have signed there instead. You know, go, go and get a kudu step. You know, go and get someone like that. You know, and we've even seen Fabio Vera play there. So there are players that can play there. Mikel has tried them there, but there, there seems to be reluctance. You can maybe move Jesus out wide there, put him down the middle. There's options. Yeah, and he played another 90 plus eight today, which is crazy. And the thing with Roger is he's at least he stood in the middle and you know, can kind of stand still for a couple of games. Saka's got so much responsibility. He's got to repeat sprints. And he gets fouled and, often. And his defensive numbers as well. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Andrea, thank you so much for your contribution. Saka at Sonaka playing 243 games at 22. Right. So to put that in context, guess how many games Gary Neville played for Man United? So this was from 1992 to 2011. For nearly 20 years, how many games did Gary Neville play for Man United? For 500? 602. Okay. So he's he's played coming up to half of Gary Neville's entire career appearances for Man United at 22. That is yeah, many It's concerning. It's concerning, especially when you see the player on the field struggle. If he wasn't struggling right now and he was thriving and he was looking, looking to get past players and scoring goals, no one cares. No, no one cares. When he was doing it in January and Pete, he was scoring goals, no one cares about his rest. But when you can see him right now looking a bit, I wouldn't just say physically tired, but mentally tired, you know, he's not as sharp as he, as he normally is. There has to be a question asked there. But, you know, we as, as long as we keep winning, people will forget about it. But I'm telling you, the moment we don't win a game or we drop points, or we're a, bit, we're a bit shaky. That's the first thing that's going to come up is why does Saka not get a rest? And I, yeah. I don't know why Mikel doesn't answer it. Is Mikel ever really questioned about it in, in press conferences about what's happening with Bukayo? Because I think he's mentioned it once and he goes, look, the top players have to play every three days and stuff. But at this stage of the season, it makes sense. But because Bukayo has been playing all season, that's the concern. You know, Maybe rest him in the early parts of the season where you have a little bit more room for mistake. Whereas now, you know, he, of course you have to start him and you have to play him. But in a game like this, I, you know, I don't know why Reese can't come on. Milo Haynes, does Mikel never rotate Saka, Erdegaard and White because that's his right-hand side triangle that's most reliable in terms of attacking threat rotation, which would break that chemistry? Y yeah, probably. I mean, I guess in his head, he's thinking, well, that's my, you know, if I take that out, then, you know, that's a real concern for me. But you've got to find other way. This is another thing about fixing the left-hand side. If we properly sort out the left-hand side, I think Timber will massively help and would have been a massive help this season, by the way. If he if he does that and fixes that left hand side properly, that takes the pressure off the right hand side. It means you can give White, you know, take him off for forty five minutes. You can get, give Saka for it. You know, no one's suggesting that you know Saka will be involved in every Arsenal game if he's fit. But it's about the minutes, managing the minutes. And does he need to play ninety plus eight when Vieira's on the bench? And you got and you and you you know you, yeah. Look, of course, of course, you know you could say well when you're in the match you're thinking. It's very easy to say after the match once you won and say it's easy, but in the match to make that decision is hard. But you've got to manage it because it's part it's part of management. It's not it's not well you know I've got to win the game and there's you know that's it we forget about it. There will be another game and there'll be another game and there'll be another game. So you have to think about it and think about strategies. So it's it's concerning. And yes, I do mean Timber as a left eight. Um, I've seen this as a shout. Jesus is a left eight. It would make more sense than Timber. 
That's what I'll say. Great. It does make more you know, sense. And we, look, we've seen forwards play there. Havertz plays there. He's a forward. You know, Trossard plays there. He's a forward. So why can't Jesus play there? Because he's got the defensive work rate. And he's actually, to be fair, if we're talking about that profile back and get the ball and receive and turn, yeah. Uh, and I think you can try his skills in midfield anyways. Um, so I think the passing is the only question. And I think it's perfectly fine. So maybe uh, we'll see if Mikel tries it maybe in, in a game of really chasing. He puts in K up front and Havertz. And then you've got Jesus behind him and, and Odegaard chasing the game. Foden had more minutes in sack of the season. Yeah, but look at Foden's minutes over the last five seasons. This is the point, yeah. isn't it? It's not, it's not, it's not the it's not the necessarily that he's playing loads of games. That's not the problem. Yeah. It's five, six seasons of playing. It's how we games. play. It's how and we how... ask him to play. Yeah. And it's very important to point out because he has to chase back every single time. Have you have you ever seen Saka not chase back? <laughs> no, because he's always back there. And he's always battling and he always gets fouled. And there's the worst fouls as well. And then we, we, we see memes of him limping. Well, why do you think he's limping? It's not for Twitter, but I'll tell you that for a fact. You see the amount of times he gets fouled. I think he might be one of the most fouled players in the league for sure. It makes sense. Mate, that thing they And also the first action of every left back that plays Saka is just... Yeah. It's, it's so fun. boring. I want to see some cards for it. Also, I watched a video, um, which I think was a really good idea, of John... I think it's John Brooks or something, one of the, one of the referees. And they say... We watch games and we prepare for what the scenarios that might come up. I'm like, well, watch a fucking Arsenal game. And within about a minute of every game, the right winger gets smashed. And you yeah. say, and you say either before the game, if you do that, you're, you're getting a yellow straight away or you're, or you're giving them a, a basically a final warning. Like, I, I, I don't understand what, what more does Saka need to do to prove that he is targeted? I, I don't get yeah. it. Get it. Yeah, that's okay. enough. Let's do um, a couple more questions. Alex, remember that Chelsea fan who dropped to suck a limp compilation? Yeah, and also, I mean, someone put a simp, limp compilation. Simp compilation. <laughs> I didn't put that. Uh, limp compilation. That's a very different thing. see a simp compilation. Uh, <laughs> a limp compilation. Um, and it was, and I, and I, like, he's still got something like 24 GA in the league. Like, it's the guys. Yeah. In- no, no. It's funny because Saka will have... A run of 10 games is outstanding. The score goals get assists. You have two bad games. Oh, he's been poor all season. You know, I prefer Saka in 21 22. He was better back then. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we preferred him when he wasn't such a threat, essentially, when we were in top four. Um, mentally tired is fair, physically tired is a cop out. They're linked for me. They're linked. They're linked. They're physically, you know, I think, you know, you, <laughs> you look up mind body connection, you find all these things about, you know, the, the literal physical feeling will tire out your brain and your brain being tired will trick your body into thinking you're tired. It's all linked. So we can't quite, we can't, I don't think we can sort of separate them out in that way personally. Uh, let's do two more questions. Rob Bob, do you think, <laughs> Rob Bob, do you think Alex is coming back instinct has been training him at Chelsea? Give our test one of the preseason and then more positive attacking instinct will be his go-to, I think. Possibly. I also think having someone else on the last line, if we are going to do that as a number nine, might mean he sort of feels more supported when he's always the one on the last line. I think that's the reason he cuts back because he's the one receiving it and he thinks there's no one behind me. If he is going to play, as George has referenced, almost as like the backboard to a centre-forward, or you get a backboard centre-forward and you have Havertz sort of behind him as a second striker, we might see a bit more instinct. I don't know about Chelsea. I think that's a bit bit far-fetched. The only thing you can say from Chelsea is his, his Premier League reputation. I think it plays a part for sure. You know, he'll be aware of that. Whenever he's on the board, if he makes a mistake, that, you know, I also want to talk about it, but so will rival fans. Uh, and I think it's very much, sometimes you, he'll play in a bit of safety. It was a lot more at the start of the season. I think now we're seeing him try more, take more risks and, and definitely have more of an impact. You know, he was he's not really a passenger anymore. Even in this game, he was one of our most involved players. So he's growing. And I think that's the most important part is you see actual improvement over the course of one season. Give him a bit more time and a bit more understanding on the Miguel Arteta. And, you know, we've got a player. Yeah. What's the expected touch balls for this video? This is the one part I hate about Winden. I prefer the losses, actually, is quite. This, we we have a vote. We, we're a, we're a democratic union. On no, it's rigged. It's not fair. I don't. That's it, Rick. You both of you don't like it. It's the audience who wants it. Yeah, so it. The, there you go. That's, there's a vote there. Me and George out. You in? Who wins? Us. I was, oh, oh, so I'm outvoted. There you go. There you go. Sorry, lads. Yeah. Uh, no field set numbers, unfortunately. Scott has not put them out. Um, I'm just assuming also 68.7%. I think we question is. Is what? It's quite deep. Is. No, no question. There's no question mark. Is. Uh, look, pleasure as always. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Uh, back to winning ways. 
by the time City next play, we could be four points clear. And we and they go away to Brighton, they go away to Spurs. I don't want to see look, it felt like it after the Villa game, as I said. And as I said on the instant reaction, it isn't over, but it feels like it. Now we've had some time to think. Um, I do change my mind. Uh, crazy. I'm a human being. Um, it's not over. And I don't want to hear anyone saying it's over because it isn't. It just isn't. And we, we can't think like that as a fan base or as players or anyone. I don't, I don't think it's, it's, it's right. With five um, games left and your team's top of the league and you think you can't win the league, there's something wrong. <laughs> there is something wrong. And I'll tell you, if you flip it around and see yeah. where the team chasing us right now, and we had the games in hand, they would believe. Yep, yep. And also, yeah, of course they would. And also, both Kevin De Bruyne and Erling Haaland asked to come off in the Champions League game. If you watched that FA Cup game and thought City were fully fit, I don't accept this, yes. I don't accept them. Uh, Babs, any final closing thoughts? Um, just Let's just not be shameless. That's what I'm going to say. So let's not be shameless. Let's not be shameless. I'm talking to you specifically. Let's not be shameless. <laughs> we won't do it. We won't do it. Uh, pleasure as always. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> some fun, funny comments, man. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you check out all the instant reactions. We'll be back after the uh, Chelsea game on Tuesday night. We'll be back with the podcast on Monday. Uh, and we've got some thoughts from new Patreon content potentially coming out. So we will, we will keep you updated. Apologies for my tech today. Uh, I'll be back, but you know, commitment to the pod. Pleasure as always. Thank you, Babs. Comments. Just, just relax. You're under surveillance. Do you not encourage him? They want it. Good night, folks. Good night. Go.